health and there are claims the national health insurance scheme has not been able to pay hospitals and service providers from july to november 2013. according to joy news sources this is crippling health care delivery in these facilities Meanwhile, the scheme says, though it's registered a little over 4,000, it has registered more than 1 million people in 2013. 2010, for example, we covered a little over 100,000 people. Um, 2011, about um, 300,000 people. And 2012, close to 400,000 people. But this year, uh, we've uh, exceeded... Um, the target even and we, we've done about 280 percent you know um, more than what we experienced or we achieved last year my name is bright Nanamfu, and welcome to today's big story now according to information joining is gathering from the bonahafu region health facilities rendering the service have not been reimbursed since july now this is affecting healthcare as these facilities are unable to purchase needed items to serve Patient Joy News source at one of these facilities said his organization was called just today to collect reimbursement for July 2013. Now this means they will go into 2014 with reimbursement for August to December not paid. Let me quickly get onto the phone lines now. Uh, John is our source uh, in the Bonaf region. Now, John, thanks so much for your time. Now you claim that uh, the service uh, has not been able to pay. Uh, for uh, services that has been rendered between uh, which month and which month? Yeah, right. Good evening to your uh, viewers. Mm. Yeah. Actually, um, my facility in the Brunhaf region um, has, hasn't been reimbursed um, since um, July to November this year. Mm. And as, as, as you rightly said, so just this, this afternoon, around 2.30 p.m., that um, the facility was called uh, the che check for July um, bills are, are, are ready, which oh. that um, we are going to enter 2014 without the, the other um, arrears from um, August to um, November. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, let, hold the line. Don't drop it. Let me speak to uh, Selom Adonu. He is a communications manager of the National Health Insurance Authority. Now, uh, Selom, thanks so much for staying there for us. Uh, has this come to your notice? Well, thank you very much, Bryce, mm. and uh, uh, good evening to you. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to John on the other line as well. Mm. Mm. Um, well, uh, I mean, that, that's an interesting position John, John has uh, put across. Mm. And uh, it, it, is, it is true, but it must be put in context. Right. Um, John will, uh, will, will be the first to admit, I believe, that uh, the very design of the National Health Insurance Scheme is such that the NHIS pays providers in IREA. And you know, per you know, some uh, uh, unconventional agreements or things we've not written, but per, per some of the agreements, right? You know, it takes about 60 days for the NHIA to do the reinvestment because we must vet the claims, be sure about the money we are paying people, amongst other things, and that takes quite a lot of time. Mm. And the service providers also have approximately 30 days um, within which to submit their claims for a particular month. So when you put all these together, it comes to about 90 days which is about three months. So per the design, the scheme pays, you know, in three months of IRS. That is, you know, uh, uh, how it has been. Mm. And we are trying to improve that. Right. And the, the institution or the establishment of the claims processing centers across the country, four of them, you know, is hoped to quicken this turnaround time so it's easier. Um, he said he was just called this afternoon right. uh, for his July claim. Some have received their July claim. And we're in the process of even paying August claim. So assuming that even in his case, um, his July claim is come. It's left with August, um, September, October, and then uh, November. But I don't know whether he's even submitted his November claims yet. Mm. A lot of the November claims are now coming. Right. So irrespective of when you submitted your claims, we will still have to take the time you have to take to process it. So you could submit your January claims in December, but we will not say that because it's a generally cl general claim, we will, we, will, we will quicken it. It has to go through the same process. So I think it will be interesting to know when John submitted his, his August claims, and then we can do the calculations from there. So if, if you take the three months from August, September, October, November, mm. you realize that in actual fact, we are just in arrears of about a month, but it's actually about four months because of the three-month thing 
have just explained. And I, and I think John will, 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 will agree with me on that. Right. So, uh, Salom, uh, you're just uh, telling us that uh, this is uh, very normal with the system you're running and that uh, uh, there is nothing wrong with it as uh, of now. Well, um, um, it, it, uh, the system we run, and mm. for what the providers have accepted to or have agreed to, we pay claims in IRS. Of course, it is just and and, and you said it is three months. Yeah, it is three months per mm. the calculation that, mm. that I just made to you, and it it is just the capitation people who have their payment, you know, upfront. They have their payment at the beginning of the month, so they can cater for the people. That is a different arrangement, mm. and that is why we are hoping to scale up capitation across the country. But that's a, a whole different discussion, maybe for another day. So right. yes, the scheme pays in IRS. It's unfortunate that maybe there's some one month somewhere. But it would be interesting to know when John submitted claims for August, and then we, 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 we can do the calculation. So, ho we hope to improve, and we hope to quicken the turnaround time and ensure that things move faster. It's a human institution. Mm. We're trying to introduce technology. That's why we are bringing the e-claims or the electronic claims management process. And we hope that, you know, in, in the near future, all these things will be over. We are piloting, actually, the e-claim system. And I can tell you that all 47 facilities on the e-claims system have their claims paid up to date, up to November, they have their claims paid. Right. And that is the kind of system we hope to roll out. And by March next year, we hope to have about 500 facilities on this. And we'll be increasing it so, you know, we will get a very huge number on the e-claim system. But let, me speak to, let me speak to John briefly. Uh, don't drop your line yet. Now, John, um, is it a matter of you not submitting your, your claim forms uh, early enough? Or you think that uh, the processes simply has delayed the reimbursement? Yeah, right. Uh, in fact, I can say, say for a fact that our, all our claims have been submitted. Mm. Yeah, and, 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 and as, as you rightly said, uh, even if we are to go by the system of um, at, at least um, three months um, arrest, uh, at least if, even if they are to pay us, at least it should be July and then August. Yeah, but, but, but so it is only one, one month that they are paying. And looking at this um, long, um, five months, Mm. Looking at this, and then the fact that we are also, you know, b b um, borrowing from banks and then um, buying things on on credit, our 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 creditors are are really most of them furious with our delay in 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 paying them, mm. and it is in fact having a negative effect on 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 our service um, delivery. So if um, they they could um, quicken this um yeah 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 please i think it, it 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 will have a positive um impact on on the health that we are we are you know we stand for yeah uh, uh, tell me how is your how is your facility struggling to deal with uh, operations especially when uh your reimbursement uh, is delaying yeah in fact today it it it, it was a funny um, situation in in my in my facility you know, today is 24th, and then people uh, are in need of money to go and celebrate their, their, their Christmas. But then um, the facility hasn't been able to even pay uh, no mechanized um, salaries from, I think, uh, October to November, including this, this month. And then, uh, and then even uh, Christmas bonuses were, were even not paid. So people were, were, were quite very, 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 very serious today. So uh, it's like people are working, but then... There's nothing to motivate them to, to work. And, and, and then also, our suppliers too, sometimes they are reluctant to, to you know, give us items on credit because we always delay in, in, in paying them. So it is really having a negative um, impact on, 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 on our service. Um, John, hold, don't drop the line yet. Uh, uh, Salam, you're sure that uh, this is a delay. It's, it is the way. Uh, the system runs, uh, and that uh, you have uh, even uh, processed that of August, if I, if I, if I got you right. Uh, how assuring can this be for these facilities that are rendering uh, service to the scheme? Well, uh, thank you once again for, for that question. And mm. I, I um, empathize with the situation John finds himself. Mm. But uh, again, you know, it's just to stress the fact that the, the system, uh, the very design of the scheme, pays in IRA. So even he admitted that if maybe we have paid for July and August, that would have been fine. And as I alluded to earlier, uh, if, if you look at the three-month allowance I talked about, then you, you, you realize that it's just one month 
in, in default terms, right. strict terms of it. Right. So, John, you know, John agrees it, to that. Yeah. So, mm. so you know, but then John, too, I'm sure, is one of the first people to admit as well that the system has improved. You know, we're coming from a place where, I mean, uh, we, we have claims areas of about eight, nine months, sometimes ten months. You know, but now we are, we are in a situation where we have just about one month technically, you know, minus the three months allowance I talked about. So it's a situation which is improving. It is not a perfect system yet. Nobody has alluded to that. Right. It is a system we are trying to improve. We are trying to better. We are trying to introduce new systems and new technology. You know, last year alone, we processed about 27.7 million individual claims. You know, 27.7 million individual claims. And that is a huge number of claims to produce. That is why we are introducing technology. That's why we are bringing in the electronic claims management process. We know that, yes, the turnaround time, though it's something we've all agreed to about a three months, it is quite a, a long time for somebody to get this money. We are not happy with that, but it is public money, and you don't want to pay money to the wrong sources. Even in, in as much as we try to do what we do, you know, there are, inst you, there are instances you hear in the news that some monies have gone to this provider, it shouldn't have gone to. And that is even why we have instituted a clinical audit, which, you know, recovered about 22 million mm. and, and sometime last year because of what we call overpayment to, to providers. You know, it's, it's, insurance is quite a tricky area. And, you know, it's the virgin part Ghana is spreading. I, 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 until 10 years ago, there was no position as a scheme manager. There was no position as a scheme claims officer. All these things are new things we are doing. You know, it's a virgin part we, we are trying to tread on. And, of course, some of these difficulties will come. But what is important is that, you know, our eyes are on the ball and our providers, our stakeholders, understand that this is how it is. You know, money matters are very important matters, and especially when it comes around the Christmas time. And I, as I said, I empathize with John, mm. but, but John will also understand that the situation has greatly improved and we are still in the process of improving. So we get to a place where we can pay, you know, uh, very, you know, uh, uh, I mean, almost instantly. And that is why the capitation too is important. If right. the capitation had been in this region, you know, he would have had quite a chunk of his money ahead of the month and he would have been able to do a lot of the plan. We, we think about them and we, we are in business because we are in business. Right. And we also admit that you know, NHIS has brought quite a number of clients to his facility. He may tell you that 85% of the people who visit his facility are NHIS can bear it. So if you have such a huge number of people, you know, from, from, from your clients, in this case NHIS, coming to your system, you know, you, you can understand the business relationship and you can understand why a little delay in claims payment will have such adverse effects right. on, uh, on, on, uh, on, the, uh, on your financial status. Salam, you talk about uh, going the uh, electronic way. When are we likely to see this fully uh, being implemented? <laughs> All the big facilities in Ghana, you know, are running the electronic claims management system. Mm. Colibu is running it. I mean, all the 10 regional hospitals are running it. Uh, um, some key facilities are running it. Some selected district hospitals are also running it. You know, we have about 57 facilities, you know, uh, 47 facilities on the system now. And by March, April, we hope to add about 500 more facilities to it. You know, we can't say that we'll reach a place where there'll be 100% electronic claims management. Because even in our very advanced countries, US and Co, they only have about 90-95% electronic claims management. There will be instances where you certainly have to first claims manually. But it is a progression we are making quite fervently and, and quite vigorously. And, and we hope to get there and we hope to manage a lot of these claims electronically so that even if there's anything to be done manually, it will be few or uh, just a few of them. And that can be done quickly and, and, and people will have them. And we are not happy to, to, to be putting people in a situation that John finds himself. Right. But again, John will also understand that it is public money and we as a custodian of that, you know, we must ensure that the money go to the right sources and, and, and right things are done. Should they, should they ask for interest if it delays? Uh, I'm just what, thinking that, aloud. What, that, that is not part of the contractual term. <laughs> but you know. but, so, but so, what do you so, think? So we, you delayed your money. So should they ask for interest? Well, it's a, it's a business relationship. You know, a lot of things happen. In so, so, so maybe the two of you need to be talking about that. Well, you know, maybe John will have to cancel his talk about it. But you know, there's nothing like that on the table. That's right. You know, maybe we, we the, not had any discussion uh, like that, yes. the service providers will begin to think about that. Uh, Salam, thanks so much and Merry Christmas to the NHI and all your staff. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas to you and right. your team as well. Right. Let me wrap up with John. John, uh, you find yourself in this situation. Uh, the, the scheme is promising uh, to uh, go electronic uh, and uh, get these resolved. But until that, 
uh, you might have to uh, stay in that. But uh, in wrapping up, your facility is, is, is going through this difficulty. Now, when the, the monies are released, do you get uh, perhaps some word or two from the scheme as to uh, perhaps an apology for the delay in release of funds? Oh, really, I, I, I cannot confirm that, um, yeah. But then, as, as you know, um, uh, we are such a facility. If, if whenever they, they delay, sometimes we have to borrow money from, from banks to even pay some non-recognized um, salaries. And these, these borrowings also come, come with um, interest. Mm. So we, we borrow at an interest. But they, they, they reimburse us without any, any, any um, top up. So mm -hmm. I, I was asking it's, it's Salom, right. I was asking Salom if uh, perhaps uh, the two of you, the service providers and the scheme, should be talking about interest on these funds that get uh, gets delayed. Is, is it on your mind too? Yeah, but as as it stands now, it's not part of the of the agreement. But yeah. you can you can you can lobby for it. Yeah, yeah. I think I think maybe the facility should should, should start um, lobbying. For it, yeah. Right. John, thank you so yeah. much for speaking to us. Uh, John yeah, is a citizen journalist. Uh, he uh, is with one facility in the Bonahafu region and uh, where the National Health Insurance Scheme owes about five months uh, reinvestment. And uh, Salom is explaining that uh, some difficulty with administrative processes. Sidwa Ho is the president of the Coalition of Universal Access to Health. He says, join me in the studio. So you're welcome. We'll be yeah. talking about that, but let me also alert you that uh, health service providers in the Ashanti region are asking government to immediately withdraw uh, the capitation grant. They are saying that it is simply not workable and that government should hold on with its uh, nationwide rollout and until other issues are resolved. We'll speak to uh, Dr. Yabwe Uzi, he is the Metro Health Director in the Ashanti region. But Sidra is here. Sidra, this issue of delays in payments of uh, reimbursement, the coalition, I'm sure, has come to your notice several times. Yes, right. Um, Merry Christmas to you and, mm. and to your listeners. Um, I think this, listening to Selom, mm. what he said is partly true and is partly false. It's partly true because um, some health care providers uh, do submit, to some extent, submit their claims somehow late. In and good it, time, and some others do that in, yes. uh, uh, not in very good time. Yes, and if you listen to him at the end of his uh, submissions, mm. he was apologetic and was trying to call the sympathy or the understanding of health, health service providers so that they can understand that much as they, are, uh, they may have issues, the system is not perfect. Mm. But I also say that is fatal for because I do know that the Christian Health Association of Ghana has been following the National Health Insurance Authority for some time now and they are frustrated. Mm. And it is not because they have not been paid, not because they have submitted their claims late, but because of the inherent challenges the National Within Health, the system. Yeah, the National Health Insurance Authority is facing regarding their financing. I can tell you that the Minister of Finance owes the National Health Insurance Authority about four months arrears. We'll come and talk about that. Let me speak to Dr. Yebua Ewuzi. He's a Metro Health Director and a spokesperson for the group uh, that is asking uh, the immediate suspension of the National Health Insurance Scheme capitation until a nationwide rollout is started. Uh, Dr. Ewuzi, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, thanks and good evening to your listeners and viewers. Thank you. Uh, uh, Dr. Wuzi, uh, health service providers in the Ashanti region are demanding an immediate suspension of the NHIS uh, capitation until a rollout uh, is started. Why? Yeah, thanks. Uh, actually, we are appealing to government to ensure that National Health Insurance Authority puts a stop to it. Mm -hmm. We are not demanding anyway. So that is that. Now, the reason is that uh, we have compared our figures, what we get from capitation, because right from the onset of the capitation, we said that the rate, capitation rate was very, very low, and insurance had been arguing. So we had to bear it because it's a pilot for 12 months, and after the 12 months, it was agreed that it was going to be scaled up the whole nation. In fact, when we had a stakeholders review in January 2013, they promised that by April they would scale it up. It didn't go anywhere. By mm -hmm. July, they said, oh, it will be July. And then we have finished 
2013, 12 extra months. And today, we showed the whole public and the, the people who came about what if, if you get about 100 people coming to your facility this month, the amount of capitation are because of those who have registered and chosen your place as their provider, the amount of capitation gives you. You compare with another facility in another region with the same 100 people coming to OPD, the amount they give them is far, far higher. So the question is, if they are not implementing scaling up, why should they continue to cheat us? That is the problem. Right. So we are asking that we are not going to say they should implement, they should scale it up or not. But for now, we have finished, capit we have finished pilot a long time. So we should all do the same insurance in right. every region so that when they are ready for scale up, then we all scale up because they will tell you, oh, next year we are going to scale. And that is what they did. And the whole 2013, I'm telling you, if you take, I have one, 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 one hospital, for instance, with me. It's a mission hospital. The whole year, the amount they were supposed to have was, if it were not capitation, but it was like any other region, they should have got 439,000 Ghana cities. Mm. And the amount of capitation they got was 177,000. You see the point? Right. And this is what is happening for all facilities in Kumasi. And do you know that the most interesting thing is that now government does not give submission to any government facility. So you are supposed to use your intelligence in real form for everything. So if there are some other hospitals in other places are getting higher amounts, and then you are getting this more, then it is a cheap. So we are saying that after capitating, they should, 12 months has also come to add. It is enough. Let us all wait. If they want to do it in July, we all join. That's mm. all what we are asking. That's what you're asking for. And you are saying that you're not demanding, you're appealing to government. If, if your oh, appeal, yes. if your appeal yes. is not heard, what next? Yes. Oh, if your appeal is not heard, we will continue to do what we are doing so that tomorrow or any time future, people will see that uh, this and this and what the people ask for. Uh, I mean, the truth is that uh, if you are getting less funds, it's likely it, it can affect the quality of what you are giving. Right. That one is clear. So, so future, it, if we will continue, as for that one, we have no option but to continue. But at least the average Ghanaian, if he hears of any uh, low quality or anything, he can say that, yes, you are giving them less money than others. So mm -hmm. comparing is, is not... It's not the best. So, uh, so, so you're saying that if, if your appeal is not heard, you will continue to provide the service, but you can assure that that will not be quality service. No, I, I did not say that. I'm telling you that if we don't need funds for providing service, mm. then we can even give a zero. Then everybody will. So what I'm saying is that by all means, we cannot provide service which will be quality compared to Another place that you give, if you give me 100,000 and you give another facility 100,000 every month, and you, do you think you can provide the same quality of service? So, so you, the, you, the, 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 the quality of your service will be reduced. That is what you're saying. Yes, exactly. I'm telling you, let me give one example. This quickly. Is not uh, quickly. Mm. Uh, quickly. Uh, right now, most of the facilities, there are certain laboratories and things that they, they, they will ask the patients to pay. In fact, there are a lot of co-payments. If you take the private, they say they, they, are, they are doing captation, but they charge the clients. So these are all things. And at the end of the day, the clients who are suffering. And we keep quiet and we just close our eyes. So that is what I'm talking about. Thank you so much, Dr. Yabua. But at the end of the day, my last word is that if everything is fine, let's do all do the same thing. What right. is it difficult about it? Let's, let the whole nation do one, one, one thing. I can assure you that they can never start captation before June. So January to June, what do we do? Just because we are in a central region, we should, we should get this country money. That is the problem. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Dr. Yabwe Wuzi is the Metro Health Director of the Ashanti region. They're talking to me about uh, capitation there. But let me come back to the studio. Sudwa, so you were making a point that uh, the Minister of Finance is owing the uh, uh, NHI. Yes. The old the National Health Insurance Authority mm. our former areas. And so this puts the National Health Insurance Authority in a very difficult position because if the transfer do not come, 
how they also going to reimburse the service providers. Mm. And now I can tell you that this is linked to the issues that the Metro Health Director has it's raising. And I agree with them because it's about equity, it's about fairness. Mm. If it was agreed that this uh, captation be piloted in the Ashanti region for a year, it's two years now, and it's not been stopped. So listening to them, all that they are saying is that either you roll it out nationwide mm. so that all other health facilities will be covered. Uh, under the same system. System. Or you, you, you suspend it in the Ashanti region, pending when you'll be ready to roll it out. Nationwide. But I can tell you that the National Health Insurance, having uh, piloted in the Ashanti region, has come to the realization that it is very good. But they have a challenge in ruling out it out nationwide. You know why? Tell me. Because the fans will not be able to provide the payment. Because with the captation, you are going to pay service provider nationwide up front. So that is the problem they have. That you, you cannot delay their payment. You need to pay them up front the to be able to provide the service. With the captation, we agree that for malaria, you are going to, uh, the National Health Insurance Authority is going to say, for example, 10 cities for malaria treatment per, per capita. Mm. So if that's the agreement, and then, so for the number of patients you have, they're going to pay you, let me say, example, 100 Ghana cities. Mm. So that one, they're going to pay you up front. Mm. So if they roll it out nationwide for all their accredited facilities, they're going to pay the money up front. But here is the case. They're so having, that is where the difficulty they're having challenges is. Mm. in terms of the financing of the scheme. They don't have the money certain there that they will take and always pay the service providers up front. And I believe that is why, even though they realize it's good, it's efficient, they are still keeping it at the Ashanti region and finding it difficult or buying time in terms of ruling it. And that is why our campaign has consistently said that this scheme is one of the best things that has happened to this nation. Mm. But we have to revisit the financing model because the VAT component is perfect, the SNIC contribution is perfect, but the premium component is, 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 is not pulled. We are not getting a lot of money. From, from the premium? Yes. So we're saying, that, look, let's take it off and look at other sustainable ways of raising money. That is realistic. And there are and some have, you think we can, we we can use to raise options. money? Yes. Uh, well, what example, are some of the options? For example, mm. let's say that for every person using mobile phone in this country, we charge you two Ghana cities spread over the year. So for you, Bright, who uses, let me say, a mobile phone, mm. we are going to charge you two Ghana cities, which will be deducted from all the credit you buy that in Nigeria for two years. So it will be like, you will not even realize it. The ch same rate for, uh, between the city and the rest are roughly two cities. Mm. So if, for example, MTN subscribers are about one million Ghanaians who are on MTN, we will get like... Uh, sorry, 15 million. Sorry, if for example, MTN has 15 million Ghanaians on it, on it. we'll be getting 15 million dollars for MTN alone. And this is yet something people wouldn't realize it. Okay, the same for Vodafone, this money, and the same for the other service provider. This money will be invested probably they can loan it to the bank or whatever. Investor at a very good interest. Look at the money banks are making, right? And this money we can generate a lot of money from this alone. We are saying that look, there is a lot of mess in the environment. The mining sectors are causing a lot of harm. So yes. let's tax them. Let's tax the environmental mm. Let's tax them. Not only the mining co com uh, company, but other companies, multinational companies. Let's tax them. Look, you can't get... A lot of people are getting free bees in Ghana. Companies are getting free mm. bees in Ghana. Let's tax them appropriately in a balanced way such so that their business will not go down and yet we'll be able to uh, make a lot of money to sustain our health. We are also saying that the free zones waiver that was given to companies that want to invest in deprived communities uh, to create equity uh, uh, and to reduce rural abandon has no way. They are hanging around a crying at a commercial. Mm. Let's take it off and then we can bring the money into the basket of the uh, National uh, Health Insurance. Uh, you know, scheme. because look, we can raise a lot of money. And again, you realize that in trying to collect the premium, they spend a lot of money in terms of administrative costs, etc. The amount of money that is being uh, spent in trying to raise this premium, which is far less, is we could also put it back into the scheme. And get it right. again, you also realize that there's a, a growing indigent uh, population in the scheme. A lot of people are coming under the indigent. And that is perfect because it provides financial protection for the poor and vulnerable. And so for these people who are getting the services, and then there's no money to pay for the service. You realize that there's going to be a challenge in terms of healthcare service provider providing services to them, you know. And so these are the issues. Issues that should, I'm sure we'll find some more time to uh, discuss this issue. But thanks so much for joining me here in the studio. Sudo Ho is Thank the you. president, Coalition of Universal Access to Health. There, uh, trying to put out uh, some uh, proposals to fund the national health insurance scheme. We're wrapping up the first segment of the show on Christmas Eve and I'm sure uh, you're getting excited about what uh, Marian will be uh, talking about during the interactive segment and I'm sure he'll put you in that very mood too. It's stay interactive throughout the next 13 days. I'm coming back 
with Marion. Stay right there. This is today's big story. in Accra, Kumasi, or any other city in the country, uh, you might have seen the traffic uh, yesterday, 23rd. Today, I'm told Accra is better compared to other cities, but it's all towards Christmas. Marianne is here for the Chinese segment, and uh, a, lot a lot more people are traveling, and so uh, the traffic situation is a bit uh, not too good. It's even not. Though reports are that Accra Vehicular, was Vehicular, human mm. traffic everywhere. Today, for instance, it takes me about 40 minutes to get to work. Mm. Uh, it took me about two hours. To get to work? And the problem was just from the industrial area to this place. I sat there for about Through an hour. Avino I got the, so the frustrated. I was so frustrated that uh, the last ditch attempt was to get on an Okada and come to work. <laughs> <laughs> I see. <laughs> well, it, it's good for Christmas. You have it, a lot of it, activity. It is. But, uh, you know, whilst we're also thinking about Christmas, mm. uh, there's uh, other things, you know, that are brewing in the background. Like the PURC saying that, you know, Look, uh, mm. when you're spending Christmas, put some money aside <laughs> because tariffs are going back in January. Mm. So, what are we? Are we even ready for for this? And also, the president is announcing a major shakeup. Right. You know, something. The, there are there are rumors, there are rumors of, of a major yeah, exactly, shakeup. Mm. Of a major shakeup in the president. The last time when I mentioned my mm. name here, I, I am expecting my name to be on the list. I am side. sure that the president heard you loud and clear. Right. But if he didn't, at least I'll be your mouthpiece for today, Mr. President. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm fully available. <laughs> Marian, welcome. Welcome to the show tonight. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> this is your interactive show, and my name is Marian Toure. <laughs> Welcome back. I like to announce all the social media tools that you need to get in touch with the show. Facebook.com slash join us on TV. You'll find us there. Comment on all the posts we put there and we will share them with the rest of the full world. Uh, we are on Twitter. We tweet at join us on TV. Use the hashtag TN Interactive GH so we'll be able to sort all your comments and take them all at once. Join us. I am at modetvworld.com is our email address. And the WhatsApp number is 0260 five one eight eight zero one i am on twitter too and i tweet at mn toure As always, JN Interactive is where tech meets news to set the agenda. So whilst we, you know, all make last minute preparations towards Christmas, uh, we have been out there, when I say we, the JN Interactive team, have been out there to check the traffic situation in town and last ditch attempts to make it home for the season. Uh, but uh, the PRC says uh, you should brace yourself for tariff hikes after the festivities. Are you prepared for it? Plus government hints of a major shakeup, which will see some ministers, uh, you know, lose their positions. Those are the undercurrents that we are picking up at this uh, particular moment. Uh, we will go and take our first video blog and when we come back, uh, we'll talk about some of the trending issues and then, you know, uh, let you see what is trending and take the rest of the video blogs um, here. We are asking, why are people leaving this late? You had uh, so much... Uh, time to go some people left uh, friday others left on thursday why are we waiting to go uh you know today last minute 24th night let's take our first video blog 
right now I'm going to celebrate my Christmas at my hometown, Wenchi. With, with our bars, we're having some problems always. The bars doesn't move at the time that you want. Always the bars move around four, from four to five. So that's the reason I've come on this time. And right now, even the car is not here. So I can't even predict exactly the time I'll get to Techima because the car is not even here. For me to even see it before even t- telling you or predicting the time that I'll get to Techima. But we've taken the ticket and it will even interest you to know that as at in the morning, the ticket was around, it was sold around 25 Ghana cities. But now it is sold around 28 Ghana cities. But even we've bought the ticket, but we've not seen the bus here. And we are just waiting to see if it will come. I actually set up from the house around 12 o'clock and I got here around 3. So being the tra- the tra- tra- car, the traffic for two hours, it's very horrible. It's not good. That the government should do something about it. Um, I was doing some preparation in Kipos. I'm from Kipos. And um, the line over there is so, is so much that I can't get a bus over there. So I decided to come to Accra and then get back to my hometown. I want to go and spend the Christmas with my parents at Techima. Welcome back. Uh, let's take our next video blog. In the next one, we're asking, you know, traffic in the capital, traffic everywhere, both human and vehicular. How do we deal with this? How can we manage it? You'll be sharing your views with us on that. Let's take our next video blog. From the look of things, Christmas festivity comes with um, these challenges. So um, I wonder how we could solve this problem since everybody is going to get home and they see their family. And uh, I hope during the other, other days that it's not so. But for the Christmas festivity, I think um, that it's, it's normal. So we are, we are coping with it. I think it is all about the Christmas. Everybody wants to celebrate it. That's the reason why. The place is highly congested, as we've seen it. People are waiting for cars to travel. Cars are not coming. It means government still has a lot to do in improving the uh, transportation sector. We still need more transport, more means for means of transport so that it can convey people to their various destinations. It's very bad, it's very bad. The government should do something about it because people being choked, traffic here and there and it's actually Esmas time. So the government should know that when it's Esmas there are a lot of people in Accra to and fro so you have to do something about it. Is it that they are going to increase maybe the road connections or something of that sort? Yeah, that would be better. So let's try and break the blocks with some comments that have been coming in on social media now. And uh, the precursor is all already there. You know, we shared it with you that uh, whilst we all make last minute preparations towards Christmas, we have been out there to check on the traffic situation in town and last ditch attempts. Uh, plus, uh, government, there's a rumor, the government has hinted of major shakeups. Some ministers might lose their positions. Uh, 26 comments have dropped in in the last 15 minutes. Uh, I guess I have to say thank you for you know getting interactive with us. The show, after all, is about you, and you do your utmost to get in touch. I truly appreciate you for that. Uh, let's take some comments that have been dropping. And Air Force is first. He says, "Merry Christmas to all Ghanaians, especially all those who make this platform very lovely." And thank you too, and Merry Christmas to you, Air Force, for making my job easy. Uh, you comment, I share it with the rest of the world you speak i echo what you say and it makes it uh, a fabulous relationship thank you so so very much and merry christmas to you too newton jefford says uh, now government is going to freeze salaries meaning there will be no increment or whatsoever your prices of utilities will go up every three months as said by PRC. Now I know for a fact that the CD has depreciated so bad, the prices of goods and services will surely uh, catapult. Until that kingdom come, Ghanaians will continue to suffer in, in the hands of politicians. God save Ghana. Marion, I want uh, to use this opportunity to wish you and Bright Merry Christmas. Newton Jeffert, Merry Christmas to you too. Um, I'm, I'm sure uh, Bright. Uh, would say the same thing to you too. So Merry, Merry Christmas to you too. Majid Aoudou from Gushegu says, uh, Marian, it's unfortunate I'm not um, 
glued to my TV for the past week and I'm missing your beautiful face. Merry Christmas to you for the shaking of uh, meters is just a waste of time and resources because whether Kofi or Ama, the value is still the same. Majid Audu, thank you so much. Uh, you are also one of uh, the main people who make this show what it is and uh, I enjoy serving all of you out there, Merry Christmas to you too. Umar says, in fact, Ghanaians are brave. <laughs> Today increase, tomorrow increase. So why? Hmm. Umar again, uh, I think it was a, a double post. Uh, Dumaku Job says, Piracy and tariff increase. Cry. Adey, ya bre. Mutala gomda Picasso. Most ministers, uh, frankly, need to be repositioned and others shown the exit. We are moving to the second gear of uh, JM presidency and we need much more proactive and result-oriented personnel to take the mantle of this offices. I must say some of the ministers have shown resilience and their good works are really manifesting and they need to be commended for their good works. Marian, come to Tamale and see the traffic. I was baffled when I went to town and saw the vehicle and human traffic. People shopping left, right, front, back and center. It really showed the better Ghana is manifesting. People have embraced it. For PRLC, um, as we, we know, they are the body for this development. We don't have much to do about it as we know that prices of goods and services will always hike. And all we have to do is always uh, to always be ready for it. Merry Christmas, Marion. And I look forward to receiving my Christmas gift from you anytime I come to Accra. Um, of course, uh, when you come to Accra, uh, do well to get in touch. I'm sure that uh, a photo op won't be bad, right? If I don't have anything for you, at least we can take a picture together and then post it on, on Facebook and share it with the rest of the world. So Merry Christmas to you too. I'll break it off here and then we'll go and take our next video blog and we are moving to the utilities now. Where are you prepared uh, for the increase in utilities come January? Let's take our next video blog. Actually, the government is failing us. It's failing us a lot because what I'm saying is gov the main aim of government is to provide essential social services to the public that the private man might in one, one way or the other cannot provide because of the losses that they may incur or because of how such services are. But as of now, government is seen to be, making, to be interested in making profit just as the pr uh, private sector is doing. So that is why government cannot provide essential services. Why is that every day there is increase in uh, tariffs, in electricity, water, and then energy supply, other, all those kind of things? In, so, in fact, government is failing us because we never thought this government could go this far in all that it has been doing. Uh, I will put on the government to, yes, I take time and then do everything because right now we are suffering. And then right now, I think the economy, everything, the, like the price of everything is too much. So you should get time and rate. Otherwise, when right now the government increases the prices, they're going to suffer. They're going to suffer a lot. I don't know why it should rise up. Because the thing, if it's 20 Ghana City, it should be 20 Ghana City. Although the economy has to um, suffer for some, some of uh, some, some things, for some things. So the government should have to realize that. Um, as prices is rising up, you have to increase some of the taxes or something to fix other places so that it will, it, it will, it will be normal for all the Ghanaians. That one, when I heard it, uh, I was scared because right now, what you are facing is challenging for us. Um, the money has not, has, um, the money, that, the income for us has not increased, but the tariffs keep on increasing. So we don't know how to even to solve the problem. But we are getting to 2014, and this challenge is encountering us, or we are facing it. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a cumbersome something, but there is nothing we can do but to work hard and face it. But uh, I don't know how, why they, uh, they keep on increasing, increasing, increasing. We don't know, the economy, <laughs> it will be well. What I have to tell the government is that the government should try its best and do everything so that we can, we too, we can feel comfortable. The cry of a woman, she wants government to make us feel comfortable. And of course, 
we all deserve some comfort every now and then let's take some more comments that have dropped on social media kennedy asari beckwin says that no salary increase but always increase in utility tariffs hey prc and president mahama Ghanaians abre Said Farouk from Wa, we are a middle income country and we should be doing uh, as middle income country, paying realistic tariffs. Monies won't drop from heaven for us to develop our country, uh, but from our own contributions. Thanks, uh, JM, for taking these bold decisions. Adomako 8, traffic in Kumasi, Mampong Road is too much. Baba Musa Tamale, Merry Christmas and uh, to all Ghanaians. Uh, let's all celebrate in moderation and remember that Ghana needs each and every one of us to be alive to support her grow. I equally wish to President Mahama and his family Merry Christmas and Happy New Year in advance. I think a major cabinet shakeup in 2014 will be most welcome. Moving into the new year, we all need to do an assessment of ourselves. Abdul Lai Abdul Razak, this is Ghana for you. Merry Christmas to all Christians. Uh, Abochi Stephen Kwejo, the PRC should spare us. Cost of living is already high. I wouldn't be surprised if some ministers are shown the exit. Some actually uh, performed very badly. Adumakumaji again, uh, loose ministers uh, should be asked to exit uh, to pave way for serious ones. I'm sure that's what you want to say. Malik Fungo, this is serious. We are pleading with the government to work hard to fix the economy. Uh, Samora um, Owusuoje, we are tired of this government. They are finding ways and means to add the 25% they removed from the tariffs. Boys are bread. Uh, Kese Clement, for whatever indeed. Uh, it be continues. Corruption and hardship continues. Christian Salvo, wow, I haven't heard from you in a while. Merry Christmas to you, my sister. Merry Christmas to you too, Christian. Uh, you were saying, well, Ghana, I think that the electricity tariff increment um, must be considered because it is not easy in this Ghana. Caleb says, um, surely it will be uh, a sympathy and pity, and pity if the government still goes on increasing utility tariffs on goods and amenities after the shuffle, which will uh, send off some ministers. Ghana, hmm, let's break it off there and take our final video blog. And that is also on a different trending issue. There are uh, rumors, speculations that uh, a reshuffle uh, is looming in January. So if indeed there is a reshuffle, what changes would you like to see in the new year? Let's take a final video blog. Because education in Ghana is actually tutorial. There's no, there, there are not a lot of practicals at all. So if only it's going to improve by bringing out the practical into the educational system, that one is better. But if the government want to change, you should change from the education, uh, the edu Minister of Education. Because I think there's a fault there. If only he's going to correct himself, there's no problem with that. My expectation is that a lot of the ministers should be, the, a lot of the ministries should be reshuffled. Uh, Most of the ministers should go away. Example, um, ECG, um, energy, Minister of Energy. I think, I don't know why energy keeps on increasing and then the transportation sector. It's not, in fact, it's not benefiting us at all. And those kind of tariffs that government is, government keeps on putting on commodities, social commodities. In fact, he should take a second look at it and then bring it down. If not, next four years, I don't think the government will win again. I think for education, I, for the deputy minister of education, if you could be changed, that could be better so that um, things will, will, will normalize for us. As, as a student, I think a lot needs to be done about, um, about education. And if this reshuffle is helping us to um, subsidize or reduce the, um, the increment, it's better. But the reshuffling still keep on burdening us. And those were your thoughts there. Let's go to social media now and then finish with some comments that have been dropping on Facebook. Nana Benyin Nanayao Ado says, I don't think the automatic adjustment formula will be able to eradicate or even reduce the energy crisis we're facing nowadays to the barest minimum. So they should please spare us that. Noble Tia Francis, this is just the beginning. More increment and shake up yet to come. Or say where this says Ghanaians right. And DC will kill us 
all um all B2016. Samora Wusueje, Merry Christmas to you, Marion, and your crew, not forgetting my wife and kids. Same to you, Samora. Max Billion Techi Menson, yes, if there is more increment than this government, must put in mind that there are more demonstrations ahead uh, of him in 2014. King Vanity, hey, Ghana, what we go do we day inside like that? Okay, there's nothing we can do. That's what I say. Christian Salvo says government must care a little for us because the increment is affecting the masses. Merry Christmas to everyone and prosperous New Year. Opoku Bright says, "Hmm, uh, hmm, hey, Asem, um, I always uh, sometimes knew in the news. I, I don't know, in Tigana, shaking my head and." Um, there's another uh, word for, you know, shaking my head that I've heard people say. And this is from uh, uh, one of my friends, a phase in Miwusumitri. So, MWMT, Miwusumitri, Papa. So, we're all shaking our heads. Um, some more comments that have dropped in on the same topic that uh, we're, we're talking about right now. Yep, we still have some more comments that have dropped in. Let's take them before Bright Anful joins me so we can wrap up the show together. And this one is coming from... There's so many comments here. Okay, I, I, I left off at um, Christian Salvo, I think. Um, okay. Let's go to Abdul Anim says, Merry Christmas to everyone and prosperous new year. Opoku Bright says, Hmm, Asem, and that's where I ended off. James says, We are in the rural areas. Uh, we're not feeling anything like Esmas. Why? What is happening there? I was hoping to also be in the rural areas this time, at least to experience a rural Christmas. But uh, I'm here in Accra. I'm stuck with you guys throughout this period. And it's fantastic to know that you're also there to, you know, um, comment on everything and share your thoughts with us. Uh, Nayaz says, uh, even not the ministerial alone, the MMDCEs must be among... Oh, you're trying to say that if there is a reshuffle, you're hoping that the MMDCEs will also, you know, be moved around. The DCE for Quabri East District must be changed for performing poor and abysmal. But I think other appointees... Uh, Performing well, uh, left with few from Britchu Batnana. Okay. Um, Francis Aban says, uh, I love your dress, Marian, and Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> ah, it is uh, our one and only Francis Aban uh, with the morning show Joy FM. Uh, thank you so much, Francis Aban, and a very Merry Christmas to you too. Wise King uh, Papani says, No surprises. Poultry breads are slaughtering their bias. <laughs> King Sadiq says, as for the PR, PURC, we won't tell them anything for now. Certainly we are not prepared and the reasons are very clear for all Ghanaians. With regards to some ministers losing their jobs, I think that is good because if you're not performing well in your position, why should you be kept there for long? My opinion, God bless our homeland, Ghana. And that is where... Um, I end your comments for today and uh, to say thank you so much for being there, for getting interactive. This is your interactive show and you make my job a really fabulous one for getting in touch. So Merry Christmas to you. Bright and full is back so we can wrap up together. And exactly tomorrow at this time we'll be wrapping up the Christmas edition of The Big Story and uh, you have more opportunity tomorrow to stay interactive with Marian. It's been a wonderful year, I guess. It, it, it and, certainly uh, has been. We're wrapping up on a very high And, and I have loved all your red ties, the different <laughs> shades of red ties. Thanks so much <laughs> for having stayed here with us for one hour. We're back here tomorrow at 6 p.m. sharp to do the Christmas, the very special Christmas edition of today's Big Story. Mm. Marian will tell you why it's a bit <laughs> So special tomorrow because we want to say uh, Merry Christmas to have you us. Thanks so much. Join us exclusive. Mm -hmm. It's coming up next. My name is Bright Nana. And my name is Marianne Turidu. Enjoy the rest of our programs and we shall see you soon.